just want to keep that sharing energy going, flowing. Ooh. Good juju's 2019. It's Natalie here, and happy 2019. So excited to be into the new year. Um, just like you guys, we have some New Year's resolutions as well. We wanna keep coming at you guys with new content, um, answering any unanswered questions that we may have left on the table. But we also wanna spice things up a little bit. Get into vlogging a little bit more, even though it's a little difficult. Do a little bit more story times. Just something a little bit more personal, a little bit more interactive for our channel. In our next video, we're going to be doing another travel nursing Q&A, and we try to really respond to every comment um, and every question. However, if you guys have any further questions about life, travel nursing, nursing, etc., put it down below. Don't be shy. Put your questions down below, and we got you. So without further ado, we're going to get started right now. Right now. Right now. We're gonna get started right now with a story time. A story time from me. I first code blue as a traveler. For all intents and purposes, I just want to make it clear that I'm not gonna get too deep into the patient's story, why they were there, um, of course, name, all that other stuff like HIPAA, hello. I'm just kinda give you an overarching look into my experience. As we told you guys in previous videos, it's important before you start travel nursing to at least get two years of experience as a registered nurse. So during my time as a staff nurse, I had about three codes in which I was the primary nurse and a number of other codes in which I helped out with. My three codes, however, as a primary nurse were all respiratory codes in which the patient was intubated. So my first true cardiac code Code Blue was the traveler. So let's get started with the story time. So this happened in Oakland on the step down unit. And just like any other day, I came in to look my patients up early, which I normally do. Now, when we're looking our patients up as nurses or when we are getting report, we kind of have like little triggers going off in our head. Like if I see a patient has an MRI scheduled, I'm thinking, okay, so that patient's gonna be off the floor for 45 minutes. But also when we're looking our patients up or getting report, um, we kind of have an acuity system going off in our heads where we're like, ding, 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 red flag, red flag, red flag. And this was going off the Richter scale that day. So I was getting report from another traveler friend. Now, another sidebar. As we know, or as we've discussed prior, usually the traveler on the floor gets the sickest patient, the hardest patient, or one of the more difficult patients to deal with. Um, on top of getting multiple admissions, multiple transfers, discharges, we do a lot of groundwork. Today was unlike any other. My friend was giving me a report, and on one of the patients, in my head, just ding, ding, so we were at the bedside and we ran vitals together and the vital signs were within normal limits and the patient's presentation wasn't horrible. Because the vital signs were within normal limits and the patient didn't look bad, I decided to go take a look at my other two patients, um, three to one ratio on the step down unit in California. And I decided to get their vital signs and assess them. I came back to the room, took another set of vital signs on my patient um, and they were again within normal limits. You know, something told me to stay in the room. So I stayed in the room and I started charting. So that leads me to tip number one. As a traveler, to a fellow traveler, nurse, nursing student, whatever it may be, trust your gut instinct. Please trust your gut instinct. It's super important and it's something that I think we neglect often. Hoping for better situations or, or just thinking that we're crazy, we're not. And nine times out of 10, when your gut instinct is telling you something's wrong, something is indeed wrong. And if it's that one time out of 10 where you're wrong, at least you were overtly cautious and everyone was safe. And safety is the name of the game. Because I just felt this gut instinct that my patient was going to soon decline, um, I told, anybody who would listen. <laughs> so that's my number two point as far as 
an emergency situation in which you're a traveler, if you have that gut instinct and you're trusting it, tell anybody who will listen. So I told my charge nurse, I told my break nurse. I didn't tell the doctor just yet, and that's because the vital signs were within normal limits and nothing had changed. But I'll get to that soon. So I told them and they said, okay, well there's no evidence of X, Y, and Z yet, but it's on our radar. And then what happened? There was evidence of X, Y, and Z. I retook the blood pressure and it was a dramatic dip. So at that point, I called the doctor, number three. Do not be afraid to contact the doctor. For sure have something that backs up your opinion, um, but even if you don't have anything and you just have a gut instinct, do not be afraid to contact the doctor. They are there just like you to care for the patient. And I know sometimes I've called the doctor and I've gotten a lot of slack, a lot of kickback or pushback like, oh, well, call me if this happens or call me if that happens. Especially when you ask the doctor to come to the bedside. Because on the step down unit, other tele floors, other med surge floors, the doctors aren't at the bedside like they are in the ICU. They're either in the ICU, in the ED, admitting, seeing other patients, in meetings. There's a lot of different things that they could be doing, but they're not on the floor. And if you need them to be on the floor to see a patient, do not be afraid to let that be clear and let that be known. That patient must have been on that doctor's radar because there was no pushback, there was no issue. The doctor said, I will be there shortly. We called a rapid response and at that point the rapid response nurse was by the bedside. We were establishing other IV accesses. At this point the doctor came in and we had a whole bunch of people at the bedside. The whole gang was there, respiratory therapy, um, I think phlebotomy was there on the side somewhere in the cut. And you can expedite that process by following your gut and telling anybody who will listen. So at this point, we're all trying to figure out what our next options are as far as the patient care, um, discussing the history, discussing um, why the patient's there, what's been going on with the patient, and then all of a sudden, you know, because everyone's kind of like busy doing something at this time, whether it be starting in an IV or rerunning the blood pressure, but I was really looking at the patient, and then all of a sudden, I saw that the chest rise and fall, or chest rise and fall in, all of a sudden, the chest rose, it fell, it rose, it fell, but it didn't rise. She stopped breathing, and so I screamed, patient stop breathing, it's <laughs> like, Everyone else was kind of just like talking, but they didn't notice it. And so I screamed it out loud and I said, call the code blue. Someone smashed the button on the wall and the code blue ensued. So as the code blue is going on, it can be kind of difficult as the traveler to know what exactly your role is. On top of it being a new charting system, new environment, new doctors, new uh, rules and regulations, new principles, new procedures, um, new equipment, new like a lot of new stuff being hit at you on orientation for two days. Now you're in a situation where it's an emergency life-saving situation and you don't necessarily know how this hospital operates their codes. And there is a difference from hospital to hospital. You know, at my um, hospital that I got my staff experience at, the primary nurse was not passing meds, they weren't doing chest compressions, they were simply there to give the doctor information or the intensivist information as far as what happened during the day, what medications the patient received or was on, what the history was, what the weight is, stuff along those lines. Whereas the people working on the patient were ICU nurses that came when the code was called. As far as this hospital, I didn't know what the policy or procedure was as the primary nurse and what their role was in the code. Granted, a lot of ICU nurses came to the code and they just all kind of fell into a role. I decided to just stick with chest compressions. So me and another nurse were cycling out doing chest compressions. We successfully resuscitated the patient. We're able to bring the patient to the ICU. This leads me to my number four point. I believe I'm on number four. <laughs> Don't be too hard on yourself. I know after that situation, I just kept replaying in my head like, okay, like what if I had seen the patient sooner or what if I had done this differently or this differently or that or this and that. And I drove myself crazy that day. On top of 
uh, the code happening, like me coming in at seven, the code happening from like 10 to 11.30. My nurse manager had come up to me after the code and said, hey Natalie, I'm so sorry that happened to you and I'm sorry I have more bad news. You're floating. So on top of not even really taking care of my other two patients to the best of my capabilities because of the emergency situation, and then the emergency situation, me feeling that I could have done more, I had to then give report and then go get report on a whole new set of patients. And that just completely frazzled my mind beyond belief. Like, <laughs> I spent my whole lunch break like outside in the cold, um, I didn't eat lunch. Um, <laughs> I was just like, just really hard on myself and I guess my number four point is to just not be hard on yourself. You know, everything is a learning lesson. In that moment, we can only do what we feel is best for the patient. You have to give yourself credit for the good things that you did and identify the things that you could have done better on and hopefully just change that for the future. So number four, don't be too hard on yourself. Thank you guys so much for watching. Again, like, comment your questions down below. Share and subscribe. Turn your notifications on so you don't miss a beat. And we'll see you guys next time. We'll see you next time. Bye.